The island of Bougainville is running out of time. Fifteen years after war ended, the place has barely recovered. So today, the island's government is pushing for a radical solution. It's a controversial move that could start the war all over again. The people are worried, but also desperate for change. Like these two teens we meet on a Tuesday morning, drunk on jungle juice, so the island's right. potent moonshine. But Bogen, Bougainville is the west Bogen. province in Papua New Guinea. Like west one, one. Yeah. after crisis, everything just go unconscious. Hmm. <clears throat> you see little kids like this, five year old, six year old drinking. That's not good. Yeah, that's no, that's it's impossible, very, very but in Bougainville it's possible. Because it's hard to cope with the living standard. Everybody going out drinking, father, mother, grandpapa, grandmama going out drinking, it's hard to cook. We need some good people to come in, speak for our rights, then ask how to cope with the living standard of, you know, matching the world, huh? <laughs> what, do you, what do you want for Bougainville? Well, we want some better and good and proper living standard around here. It didn't used to be like this. In the 1970s and 80s, Bougainville was the most advanced province in Papua New Guinea, thanks to a massive copper mine called Panguna. The mining and industrial complex at Panguna operates 24 hours per day throughout the year. The mine was owned by a company called BCL, a subsidiary of global mining giant Rio Tinto. But from the start, there was opposition to the mine because of the steep environmental cost and because many felt they weren't benefiting. In 1989, after their calls for change were ignored, angry locals rose up and shut down the mine. Papua New Guinea sent in the troops and civil war broke out. By the time it ended in 1998, some 15,000 Bougainvillians had died, a tenth of the population. Today, the mine sits untouched. Rio Tinto has not been allowed back. Many here blame the company for causing the war. There are even allegations Rio Tinto ordered and funded the conflict. But now, the island's government is convinced that reopening this mine is the only way to move forward. With, without mining, like a uh, mining project like Panguna, without a big economic project, I think uh, we, 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 we will not progress. So the government now wants to do the once unthinkable. Welcome back, Rio Tinto's BCL. I mean, it's maybe better to work with a devil you know than with a devil you don't know. So that's why uh, we are talking to BCL, telling BCL, you want to come to, to operate on Bougainville, you come and operate mining on Bougainville, on Bougainvillean stems. But on the ground, things aren't so cut and dry. There's strong opposition to the government's plan and anger is brewing. Lawrence Matau agrees to take us to meet some of the people opposed to the mine. Lawrence is a former rebel. He started off as an employee at the mine, but then fought against it. Is that correct? I was yeah, in charge of the BIRA uh, intelligence unit. It was my job to monitor the enemy movement. Lawrence takes us to a remote village near Panguna where the people have been fighting to keep Rio Tinto out for half a century. They built this monument in the 1960s to mark the time they chased away an early Rio Tinto exploration team using bows and arrows. Today, they still want nothing to do with Rio or its subsidiary, BCL. I don't want BCL to come back. Because I made me come up in fight. BCL is held responsible for, the, for causing the conflict, the crisis, and the death of the people here. The village lost many men in the conflict. And during crisis, we buried them here. And the suffering of war is still fresh in their minds. And so we had to abandon, abandon our gardens behind. So we had to go far and leave the babies without no food. So we had to come back. So there we have to face the 
enemies. We're about to leave when the people tell us BCL's return could cause another war. And by second heavy by come out. Especially with BCL. <clears throat> the people think that there will be another conflict again. I don't believe that any anything will happen if we, we reopen the Panguna. Uh, we will Vice President Nasira says there is nothing to worry about. And if there are issues, uh, if there are disagreements uh, through the program, we, we, we are talking to them and we, we, we will be addressing those issues. And we believe that if we, uh, if we do reopen Panguna, we will reopen it uh, when people agree. The government has been informing the people about its mining plan through a series of public consultations. One of the government's key selling points for its plan is the promise of independence from Papua New Guinea, a long-standing dream of the people. There is no autonomy without autonomy. Bougainvillians go to the polls to vote on independence from Papua New Guinea sometime between 2015 and 2020, but only if the island can first develop an economy to support itself. The government thinks mining is the only way to do that in time. Many here are already convinced. Papua mine and we give it independence from Papua New Guinea. So why not? I mean, I'm giving independence from Papua New Guinea. But there are some issues that consultations alone can't fix. I've seen, I have seen a lot of uh, children dying, you know, women's. I've witnessed that. Even uh, in my family, in my family alone, I lost uh, 10. 10. Ten members in my family. Philip Miriori is one of many demanding compensation from Rio Tinto. He's even sued the company in the U.S. as and part of a class also, action uh, lawsuit. You know, nobody is talking about uh, human rights uh, violations on Bougainville. Even the international community, they are closing their eyes on that, that issue. On the other side of the world, Seattle lawyer Steve Berman filed the class action lawsuit against Rio in 2000, accusing the company of war crimes, genocide, and crimes against humanity. Berman's convinced the company orchestrated and funded the war. And the government got together with Rio, and Rio said, you do whatever it takes to open that mine, even if it means deadly force. You know, we had allegations that Rio had uh, supplied helicopters, arms, bullets, uh, radios, uh, transport, and we have pictures. So we have the evidence. Berman's evidence also includes an affidavit from the former Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, who said, because of Rio Tinto's financial influence in PNG, the company controlled the government. Berman also got an affidavit from a former general, who said the Papua New Guinea military functioned as the corporation's personal security force and were ordered by BCL to take action to reopen the mine by any means necessary. Would have won. Absolutely. We would have killed these guys at trial. I don't normally say that, but, you know, if we could have gotten the general's evidence on, no jury is going to have any sympathy for that kind of conduct. Genocide and the war crime. But Berman's team well, never got to face Rio Tinto in court. This past the June, the case was dismissed after the U.S. Supreme Court restricted the law that Berman had sued under, called the Alien Tort Statute. For decades, it had allowed foreigners to sue violators of international law in the U.S., but not anymore. The rulings um, by the Supreme Court and the Ninth Circuit are going to make it very hard for people in these areas that are hurt by mining companies to get justice. Because in their own countries, usually the judicial system is not developed enough um, and they don't have the lawyers who can handle cases like this. So if they can't come here, then probably nowhere. Rio Tinto's BCL did not respond to our multiple requests for comment, but the company has always maintained its innocence. Back on the island, tension over the mine is steadily climbing. Lawrence Matau agrees to take us to see the now infamous pit. We can't go alone because access is still controlled by rebels, there to prevent Rio Tinto from coming back. This is where all the problems started. Issues about unfair distribution of wealth. Issues about environmental damage. Where did you work? Uh, I was involved with the construction crew, so I worked within the pit area. We call this the catalyst. It started the whole thing. 
I know it took a lot of heartaches, headaches, heartbreaks, lives lost. But what else is there when we are fighting against a system that does not understand the people? The whole issue is about fighting against a system that doesn't understand the people, that doesn't respect the people's resources, that doesn't help to create laws that are beneficial for every, everyone concerned. Lawrence is interrupted by the arrival of a school field trip. The kids have come to get their first look at the mine that has shaped their lives. Lawrence steps in to give them a better understanding. It is this generation that will be most affected by the decisions facing Bougainville today, a point not lost on Lawrence. It is our responsibility as elders to also educate them to understand issues about mining, you know, good side, bad side. Some of these ill feelings that we have will take quite a long time to... Uh, maybe the next generation who have never seen this will, will agree to reopen this place. I am in fact in favour of BCL coming to reopen the mine. Agnes Titus Hello. used to work at Panguna. Today she's a development worker. She believes the mine will help more than it will hurt. If Panguna mine was to be reopened, that will answer a lot of the social issues we have today. I know it will create some new social issues, but the fact that there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young men and young women just staying in their villages with no formal employment. Black men, prime land was yours. Now white man, he owns your land. For most Bougainvillians, like Alan Guioni, the island's unresolved past makes the decision on mining a painful one. Alan is an artist and father of five who spent his childhood dodging bullets from the PNG army. It's not easy because we are still standing on the blood of those who died. So it's very difficult to come up with a decision to open the mine. Despite the history, Alan is open to mining, as long as things are done differently. For him, that means everyone should benefit so that families like his might get electricity, plumbing, and a real roof on their homes. He worries about the consequences if things aren't done right. I think we might face another crisis if we open a mining without setting a good um, structure for the people, uh, for Bougainville. The people of Bougainville are facing an uncertain future. In November 2013, an Australian think tank warned that conditions here are ripe for violence. The population is still heavily armed and a generation of unemployed youth are getting restless. With as little as a year to go until the independence referendum, the question of how Bougainville will recover in time remains unanswered.